Okay, I just started the recording. So hopefully you all got notice of that. We still have some people joining, so I'm gonna keep admitting folks before we get started. We seem to have a slowdown in the rating room, so we will go ahead and get going. Um, good morning, everyone. I'm Erin Conklin. I'm the director of special ed and student health um, for the school district. Thank you so much for coming together this way. Um, we um, would love to be doing an in per doing this in person and having an in person tour of the middle school right now. We're not quite there yet with um, COVID protocols. We're going to talk a little bit um, later on in the presentation about some things we're hoping to do as um, regulations. Be Bit more relaxed right now we're still being asked to limit um, non-essential visitors on campus so that's why we're doing this virtual format right now and then hopefully we'll be able to do some on the ground tours um, when we get further into the spring um, I just wanted to talk about a couple of ground rules because we are going to record this and put it up on the website for parents who aren't able to attend today. So if you're a participant and you can go ahead and keep yourself muted, that would be great. Um, we have, um, I'll introduce the full team that we have here in a minute, but um, we have Anna Russell, our communications specialist with us this morning. And she, um, if you have any questions as we're going along, feel free to drop them into the chat. She's collecting all of those. And uh, the last bit of our presentation is a question and answer session. So if you can go ahead and drop those into the chat, we'll make sure we get to as many questions as we can at the end. Um, and oops, apparently I can't go forward in my slide presentation. Nope, maybe. Oh. There we go. Okay, so um, what I'll do, I don't know how people can see the um, screen tiled, but I will go ahead and just introduce everyone we have here with us today. And if you wanna unmute yourself and just say um, hello really quick or just wave to the camera, that would be great. Um, so I introduced myself. We also have Nicole Rayherm with us. She is the Director of Secondary Education, Educational Technology, and is currently a, the acting principal of the Mill Valley Middle School. She's here with us today. Um, we have Rondi Josephson. She is the um, going to be the in counselor for the incoming sixth graders next year. James Cleland is with us. He's one of our education specialist teachers at the middle school. Gina Fagan is also joining us as one of our ed specialist teachers. Um, we have Carolyn Vaughn with us, who is our special education therapist, and she has our probably most important guest with us. We have Demi with us. She's a current eighth grade student and. Um, she is going to talk to you all a little bit about what her experience has been like at the middle school. Um, let's see, a few more people just came in the waiting room. Let me let them in and then we'll keep going. Okay, so with that being said, I'm going to turn it over to Nicole to talk a little bit about the middle school in general. Good morning, everyone. Um, so I'm uh, Nicole Rayherm. If you haven't met me before, I'm currently serving as the principal of Mill Valley Middle School. Um, and um, I wanted to just give a brief overview of kind of what we're about here at the middle school and, and what we're striving to do in our mission. Um, so we really want to have a school where our students feel welcome, safe, and accepted. We want to inspire creative, healthy, thoughtful, motivated people who contribute to our global community. And we do that by fostering their personal growth, um, critical thinking, technological literacy, and academic excellence with a commitment to high standards and support for all students. Essentially, um, we work here at the middle school to really meet our students where they are and then take them from there and build them into um, who they will end up being when they leave us and oh. out there in this world. And so um, that takes a lot of people and a lot of support and a lot of wraparounds, but we're very excited for that to be um, our, our commitment to our kids here at the middle school. Um, I'm trying to figure Anna, out. That was Anna. Can you mute yourself, Anna? There you go. Oh, you're unmuted again. Okay, Aaron, can you do the next slide? Yes. Uh, 
Okay, and then this is just a slide that kind of over is a, a brief overview of what the community at MVMS is um, and what we value and what we're trying to do. That's a little bit in flux because I think that we add um, additional um, uh, programs and, and uh, clubs as we go along, but um, for a general sense, uh, we pride ourselves in really valuing the physical and emotional safety of our students and providing an environment in which they feel that they can be safe um, when they come to us. We are kind and respectful, safe and responsible, honest and truthful. Um, we look at the education of the whole child, not just the academics, but all of those factors that go into making us who we are and prepare us to be able to um, achieve our academic goals as well. And we have a real strong focus on restorative justice and changing behaviors, um, making sure that decision making is at the forefront of what we're thinking about when we work with students and how we can improve decision making as we continue to grow here at the middle school. Um, education of the whole child's on there twice because it's that important. Um, also, we have a lot of um, extracurricular activities that that you know, many had gone away, but are slowly coming back now that we have some restrictions being lifted. We do have athletic programs, after school sports, and we have a lot of student clubs. We have music groups. We end up um, doing the cabaret at the in the springtime um, uh, here at the middle school. We have opportunities for community service for our students. Um, and at lunchtime, our wonderful PE teachers do host intramural sports, which is always a really fun way to be organized at what we're doing at lunch, put our energy somewhere um, that allows us to expel it before go, going back to class um, and really just cheer each other on, even if we're not that, you know, maybe we're not an athlete that's going to do the after school sports, but we would really like to do the intramural at lunch. So we really try to provide opportunities for our kids to get involved, meet new people, get out of their comfort zones a little bit, um, and also find areas that they really are passionate about and work in those areas. So lots of clubs for lots of things. Sorry about that. I advanced too quickly, Nicole. Was, That's okay. I was wrapping it up. So it's perfect. <laughs> I have um, too many screens going and I was checking the waiting room and my mouse advanced it. Um, before um, Gina and James start talking a little bit about what the um, special education classes and programs look like at the middle school, what I do want to say is like we're here today to give really a kind of a brief overview of the supports and services we have available. If you have specific questions about your particular student, um, you can reach out to your case manager, you can you can reach out to me if you want to have those individual conversations, but today we're really going to talk um, generally about what the programs look like. Um, and what I would also encourage you to do, um, because I know this uh, Zoom format doesn't really lend a lot to those um, like parent-parent connections about sort of um, experiences with transition and things like that. So I would really encourage you all to um, look to, it takes a village for that. It's our special education um, PTA. They have a first, it goes out in all of our newsletters, but they have a first Friday connect um, parent coffee um, where parent, where they have time just for that parent connection. I know um, I see, I can't see everybody that's here right now, but Tammy Herndon is here. She's on the board of It Takes a Village and um, I'm sure I'd be happy to share more of that information, but I would really encourage you all to use that format for those parent um, to parent connections. Um, so with that being said, um, James and Gina, do you wanna talk a little bit about the programs? Sure. Gina, ladies first. Oh, thank you, James. Um, hi, I'm Gina Fagan. I'm the sixth grade, sometimes seventh grade academic support teacher here at the middle school. Um, in my class, as you know, it is a class that your child will be coming to my class four days a week. So um, I think someone, in the past has probably explained how we have a block schedule here at the middle school. So we don't do push-ins, we don't do pull-outs. We have a specific class that your child goes to and my classroom is located in the upper earth pod. So it looks like any other classroom. So kids really don't feel different. It's a very comfortable setting. Um, in my class, we, uh, as listed on uh, this slide, we work on their goals. We work on organizational and executive functioning, i.e. their planner, their Google to-do list. We oftentimes will 
be the person initiating it first, but by the end of the sixth grade school year, we want complete independence. Um, so that child has that new tool that they're developing in the sixth grade, ready to go for the seventh grade, knowing how to get to their to-do list, writing things down that are due this week, next week, and perhaps in a, in a month's time. Um, the <clears throat> we also, during our class, support assignments from the general general educators that would be a class work assignment and homework assignment typically we do a lot of math homework in my class only because we want to make sure the child understands it before going home to do it because if they go home and do math homework and they don't know how to do it it doesn't help anyone out um, so we do a lot of math support in our class um, again, it's typically one class four days a week for about 50 minutes, and um, it's structured. We give breaks. Um, we have a reward system, um, and the reward system is uh, doled out weekly if the children choose, or sometimes um, every couple of months we'll have a reward party based on kids collaborating and collectively earning their points, putting them together and us celebrating their success in my classroom. Um, again, we in my class, we have myself and typically an aide to support your children. Um, we are a team member. We are a part of a team. We support the families. We support the teachers. Um, we, we try to support the child as much as they need us, but we also sometimes need support from parents and the teachers in order to get them to do their work. Um, I enjoy my class. I enjoy the students. Um, I think if there's ever a problem, one of the things that has to happen, parents need to let me know immediately through email or a phone call conversation. Thank you. Thanks, Gina. Um, hi, I'm James Cleland. I'm one of um, the designation of SDC stands for special day class. So that first bullet point where it says uh, specially designed academic classes for math, English language arts, and social studies. So the, the difference between what Gina does and what I do, and there's another SDC teacher too, her name's Kimberly Pearson. Um, so we're, we're um, adapting curriculum and delivering instruction. And so um, if you're, if you're, a child is a student who needs um, subjects really broken down to so we can meet them at their level they'll be scheduled either with me or Kimberly so we do um, she and I collaborate with the gen ed teachers and use that curriculum just uh, broken down into manageable chunks and uh, so my classes, Kimberly and I's classes, um, if your students are with us, um, the, the highest level of need would, they would be scheduled for language arts and social studies, which we also call core with Kimberly and then math with me. That's how it's scheduled this year. We have, that's fluid. Sometimes I teach language arts and social studies and math. So um, Often students in our classes also have a period of academic support, which is what Gina was talking about, um, because they'll also be mainstreamed into, into general ed settings as well. So a lot of times they need academic support to um, just stay on top of their science and just all their assignments. So everything Gina was talking about with what she does in her academic supports that happens with Kimberly and I as well. Um, we also um, work in concert with, with the students, with their teachers, and of course, with you as their parents. Um, it really does take a village. And um, we also just um, spend a lot of, uh, a, that sounds like I'm complaining. I was gonna say we spend a lot of energy um, building relationships with our kids, but that's really the, the joy of it. So we, I should say we prioritize um, building relationships with students to really help them get to know um, themselves as a learner and as a, 
as a young person going through adolescence and puberty and everything. Um, so, uh, yeah, we, um, similar to what Gina was saying that, you know, we, we do everything we can, we welcome communication, you know, if there's, if there are, you know, things that we need to communicate about changes in the child or your family, things like that, like we always welcome that. So, um, additionally, I always like to, um, assure, you know, parents, you know, the students coming into uh, sixth grade that we do as a middle school and then even as a department, we do a lot to really ease the transition. Um, you know, the sixth graders have their own special playground. Um, we, we just do a lot to, you know, really integrate them into middle school and make it a safe and welcoming and, you know, a, a great place for them to be. And we do take them through, as Gina was saying, uh, we, we work them toward a little, you know, more independence and autonomy. And so this is the time of the year when we're reaping the benefits of that. So um, I know I, I love communication. And so I always very much have an open door policy. So I look forward to getting to know your kids and you. So thank you for your time. I'd like to add one more thing. As a, a team member of the sixth grade uh, group, the teachers are well qualified and completely understand the transition from fifth to sixth grade. So your children, along with every other sixth grader, come in and they're all basically the same. They're all new. They're all nervous. They don't know I don't want to say they don't know anything, but it takes us as a team a, a full trimester to get the kids up and running and ready to go as sixth graders. So uh, the, the team of sixth grade teachers are well aware of children, whether they go into special ed or not, how to get them ready for middle school. It's a very gentle transition. Yeah, well said, Gina, thank you. All right, thank you, James and Gina. Um, next up, we um, have Demi to share a little bit about her experience with the classes. And just so you all know, um, we are going to kind of show you a typical um, sixth grade, grade schedule and talk that through a little bit when we get a little farther along in the presentation. Um, I joined academic support in seventh grade. And seventh grade is when like COVID started happening and everything and we had to do everything on Zoom and for me it was like really difficult to do like all of my assignments on Zoom so I would like always procrastinate and like have a lot of missing assignments and I would never really like I don't know I wouldn't really care about it but when I joined academic support I got like a lot of support and help on my assignments and I'm still in it in eighth grade and it still really helps me and um, it's really like fun sometimes and I have lots of really nice teachers and I'm always keeping up with my assignments now. Great, thank you, Demi. Um, next, I'm gonna turn it over to uh, Rondi to talk about the um, supports we have in place for our kids when they come into sixth grade. I welcome, <clears throat> excuse me, I welcome everybody. I'm Rondi Josephson. Um, a little bit about me, I have been, this is my 31st year at Mill Valley Middle School. So I have a lot of experience um, working with all students, all grades. Next year, I will be the sixth grade counselor. Um, and I've watched the special ed department grow and get better year after year. So I, I know from experience that your kids will be in great hands. Um, one of the things that I've actually already started to do is um, a big part of the spring is focusing on the transition of students from um, fifth to sixth grade. Um, I'm also shipping my eighth graders off to the high school, so I'm collaborating with them as well. Um, but I'm scheduling meetings. So the first thing that we do is we um, go out and meet with every single fifth grade teacher. So um, we will talk with every teacher about every student um, that's coming our way. And um, always there's a great focus on students who need extra support. Um, and, and generally speaking, that would be students in special ed 
who either are in the learning center format, which um, those students typically would go to James and Kimberly's program, or students who just have the academic support, um, which is usually a pullout. And as James said, it's, uh, or I think um, Regina said, it's a focused class. And so they'll be assigned an academic support class. And um, so we'll learn a little bit about your students um, to better help, help us place them. And all, all students who have an IEP are hand placed. So we um, sit down and spend a lot of time looking at what their specific needs are, um, where they need the extra support. And we do their schedules first um, before any of the other students so that there's a lot of special attention you know, placed on making sure they're um, in a, in, coming to us with all the supports they need. Um, I also will be meeting with um, the special ed teachers from all the elementary schools um, to get a little bit more information about your, your students as well. Um, another thing that we do with regard to the transition is um, we're planning this year, we haven't done it in the last two years because of COVID, but to bring all fifth graders over to the middle school um, at the end of May and have them do a, a short tour of the school and um, see what the school looks like, what the classrooms look like. So they will end this school year with an idea of how middle school looks. Um, we do a fabulous um, web orientation when this, before school starts. Um, and that's a time when only the sixth graders come onto campus. They're putting small groups with our tra highly trained eighth graders. And again, we'll get an opportunity to, to look at the school, to see what the schedules are like, um, and, and get a little bit of an experience without the other students being on campus. And that will happen in August. Um, we, uh, we also have a, a focus, uh, the, the counselors do meet with every single student um, in their grade level. So um, I have met with all the eighth graders. I've met with them every year, starting in sixth grade. I met with all the sixth graders. And I always put the students who have IEPs at the top of the list. So I will, um, in the first few weeks of school, I always try and meet with the students who have IEPs um, first, to just make sure that they're getting settled in, if they're having any concerns, any questions, um, I'm here to answer them. I also welcome the best way to communicate with me um, at, from parents is, is through email, uh, but I also do uh, love to chat by phone because I think sometimes it's easier to communicate more in, in person. Um, so if you, if you sense that your student is having some adjustment challenges in those first couple of weeks of school, feel free to reach out to me and I will put your student at the top, top of the list. Um, and so, yeah, we, we also, we have some other, other ways to support students um, that kind of filter through the counseling department. We have something called um, an audit, uh, a student homework audit where we do have students who, um, and most students with IEPs do this, where they, um, Thursday is the typical day that it's been this year where the students go around um, to see their teachers to make sure that um, there's communication between the teachers and the parents as to what the homework is. And if there's been any missing homework that week, um, students will be, parents will be informed of what that missing homework is. So we have lots of students who do the audit, whether they're, they have IEPs or not. We have a homework club that is open on Mondays and Thursdays after school where um, all students are welcome in the library um, and there's extra help available. Um, we also have this, the special ed team has been having office hours as well, um, welcoming students to get some extra help. All teachers have, um, have um, extra office hours. So typically also, um, I just wanna mention that the, we are gonna be putting out the elective signups for students um, in the next few weeks. Well, have and- Have a slide on the community for me. 
Pardon, you have a slide on that? Okay. That kind of goes through the schedule. So maybe hold that till we look at the schedule. Then you can refer to that elective sign up piece there. Okay, got it. Um, but I just, I want to welcome everyone um, to the middle school. I think sometimes it tends to be a little bit more daunting for the parents than the students. What I have, you know, what I have seen is that the students get all the support that they need. Um, we are always out in the hallways those first few weeks of school all the adults are out in the hallways to make sure students are navigating the building um, and they get it pretty quickly but we are always here with extra support and extra help so please do reach out to us if your student is having some bumps in the road with the adjustment and just to comment on the um third day a week of home homework club on the early release Wednesday, the, um, all of the special ed IAs um, in consultation with the teachers. A lot of times the special ed teachers are in um, meetings during that early release Wednesday because that's their uh, teacher meeting time, but all of the instructional assistants still work during that time. So we've um, this year been running a, a homework club for um, the special ed students where they can go and kind of work with the IAs that they've been that they work with throughout the week um, to get extra support on their assignments and um, the sixth graders have been the most participatory and excited about that we're hoping that those sixth graders take that love of it into seventh grade next year but know that there is that support there too that is um, a little more directed towards your particular students um, let's see um, so I put in here a um, sample schedule um, or just the schedule uh, when we refer to rolling block, the kids get this way faster than adults do, um, but um, the, there's, the kids have seven classes and there's six periods a day. So you can see that, um, you know, they have periods one through six on Monday, then they start at seven on Tuesday. Um, the, the case managers and the counselors will, will help your kids build out their individual schedule so that they know where they're going. Um, and again, like I said, the kids always get it way faster than the adults. Um, and with that, um, the traditional sixth grade schedule is, um, and this is Rondi where I was saying you can jump in about electives here, because um, a lot of the questions we get from parents, because um, the provision of special education services in the elementary schools, because kids are assigned to one classroom for the whole day, tends to be that pull out model. So kids are often wondering, like, what did I miss when I was receiving my um, IEP services? And what's very different about the middle school, and everyone has touched on this, is that those classes become scheduled classes um, for the kids. So it's, it's, um, it's a little more seamless than it might feel sometimes in the elementary school. So the traditional sixth grade schedule, the kids will take English language art, arts and social studies. Um, that, cl that class is often called core as they're often together. So, um, you know, kids might be taking that with um, gen ed teachers. They might be taking those in that core class with um, either Mr. Cleland or Ms. Pearson. Um, kids will have a math class. Um, science, um, PE, everybody has PE as one of their full periods now, which is great. Um, and then the kids will get a choice between electives and um, often for the students with um, academic support, um, they will take one elective and then their other elective will be that academic support class. Um, and Rondi, do you wanna talk a little bit about what the electives are here? Yeah, so in the in the past, um, before we changed to a seven period schedule, students always pretty much always had to miss the wheel class, um, which is a rotation every four weeks, the students take um, four weeks of technology, four weeks of character education and four weeks of the intro to world languages, um, not in any specific, not in that order. Um, and so because students would would take the art or music class. Now um, students that take academic support are able to choose any one of the three. Um, so what I wanted to just point out is that you when you get the elective sign up sheet, it will have you selecting just an art or music. But um, if you decide that you, your child would rather take the wheel class than an art or music class, that is perfectly fine. You can um, just let 
the teacher know, the classroom teacher know, and they can get that information to us, or you can bring that up at the transition IEP. All of you will have a transition IEP, and that's where we tailor make your um, child's schedule. So um, I, I, I attend some of those, not all of them, but I'm happy, um, you know, if, again, if you have questions about that, feel free to shoot me an email. I can talk more specifically about that. But when you get the elective sign up, it will ask you only whether you want art or music, but wheel is also an option. I'm sorry about that, everyone. All of a sudden my internet connection became unstable and everything shut down on my computer for a second. So that's why the screen share stopped, but hopefully Ronnie was able to talk through that. And you might've heard me say, oh shoot. Um, <laughs> um, let's see, let me go back. I Let me go open up the presentation again because it, well, it closed me down. I'm pretty sure that our next slide was, do you have any questions for us? Um, and let's see. Um, Okay, so I am going to, um, everything got a little mixed up when my internet got crazy. So I'm just gonna start answering the questions. Um, so there's a question about um, uh, speech. Um, so we have a speech um, person right now, Lauren DeSantis, who works at the middle school. Um, she serves the, the speech students. She's not on this call um, today, um, but um, if students have speech in their IEPs or OT, um, that is provided um, um, by service providers at the middle school. Um, James, there's a question about um, size limit or what the typical sizes of the um, specialized academic instruction, sort of, sort of those core and math classes are, if you want to answer that one. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, obviously it varies depending on student population. Um, I This is my ninth year here at the middle school and I've had math classes as small as four students and as big as 11 students. Um, and core is, is the same way that, um, you know, so the size, the size really varies. We also, I did forget to mention too that you know, as Gina was saying that her class is always supported by an instructional aid. Um, so are my classes and Kimberly's classes as well. Sometimes, and depending on the size, um, sometimes we'll have two instructional aids um, in, in the classrooms as well. But I would say average is, you know, seven to eight students is usually about where it's at with all the classes. Um, there's a question about the counseling staff at the middle school. So Rondi is not the only counselor at the middle school. There are three um, middle school counselors. And so what's nice about that is they're able to loop up with the grades. So as Ron, when Rondi was talking and she said that, you know, she's passing her eighth graders off to middle school right now, she's getting ready to, the, to move those kids to middle school and then welcome um, the sixth graders. In, and then she would be your, counsel, your child's counselor looping up with them from sixth grade to eighth grade. So there are two other counselors at the middle school as well. And, and just to mention, we Carol and Vaughn is here joining us and um, she's our, our special education counselor. So some students who do have counseling minutes in their IEP will probably be handed off to her. She also supports our staff whenever we've got overflow. Um, the, our hallways are always bustling. And so students come down, um, they can stop by at recess or lunch. We get emails from students. That's one way that they sign up to see us. Parents will email us, teachers will email us. Or if a student's having a really difficult day, the teacher may just walk them down to our office. So we kind of have an open door policy um, for students. Um, they're always welcome. If I'm not available, one of the other counselors always jumps in to see students. So. Um, we are so fortunate to have probably one of the strongest counseling um, departments and teams in Marin County uh, with a counselor at every grade level. Um, and so we do, we are able to see the kids and really support them. It's great. Um, James or Gina, can one of you, there's a couple questions related to um, how, how is information given to the gen ed teachers about the students' IEPs and their accommodations and like how the gen ed teachers um, make adjustments for those accommodations. And could you, could one of you talk 
speak to how that information is provided and how you collaborate with the gen ed teachers? Yep. I can, I can take that on. Typically what we do at the beginning of the year when we have our, when we become that case, the case manager of your child, um, in the IEP, there are forms that we print out for the teachers and the teachers get that form and it, it indicates the child's goals and the child's accommodations. The other thing that I like to do with my sixth grade team is to kind of meet with them at the beginning of the school year and go over those accommodations and goals. And then once we get to know that child, we're, we're kind of an organic group of people where we, we, we talk to each other, we ask questions. If there are concerns, we immediately as a team will reach out to the parents and let them know. Um, if we feel accommodations need to be added, I will, you know, reach out to the parent and say, we don't necessarily need to have a meeting, but we would like to add this accommodation because of, of, of X. Um, there's questions about whether or not the students who are participating in more of that um, special day class setting can take electives. Um, absolutely. Do you want to talk a little bit about that, James? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Um, because academic support is, you know, keep in mind they have seven classes. So that just takes away one. And then, um, so yet they, they're still available for one elective. And, and we have, as Gina was saying, like our, uh, because we work closely with one another, um, that we respond, you know, I've had students in, in my program who, you know, they're able to stay up on all of their work. And so we could individual for that particular student, we could individualize it and take away their academic support. And then they could have two electives. So it's very, it's, it's very individualized. Um, that example is, you know, less common, but yeah. So because there's two periods where they can have an elective one is taken up by academic support. So they're still available for an elective. Um, and then I don't, I mean, Nicole, maybe you're the best one to answer this question, but there's questions about, there's a question about um, math placement and, and um, how it's determined whether or not like kids will take, um, like what sort of math class they might have at the middle school. Um, so the, I assume we're talking about the supported and the um, uh, uh, workshop math classes. Um, I'm actually going to ask if Rondi could speak to that a little bit because she's actually got sure. the experience there. Yeah, so um, again, when we're meeting with the, um, the, with the, the fifth grade teachers and or the, the special ed team at the, at the different elementary schools, um, math is definitely one of the things that we'll be talking about. It will also be addressed at the um, transition IEP. But we have um, for sixth graders, we have two options, um, or actually three options. We have the, the regular fifth grade math class. Um, I mean, sixth grade math class that's heterogeneous for all students. And most of our sixth graders will be placed in that class. For students with IEPs, there are two other options. Um, we have had in the past, and I believe we'll have this year, a supported math class, which is comprised of about um, two thirds regular education students and about one third special ed students. It moves at a slightly slower pace, but it's, um, it's the math, um, the regular math curriculum. Um, it's just, there's not quite as much homework and it, and it, it moves at a slower pace. So it's a little bit more accessible for students. And again, that's some students with IEPs and some students that are regular, um, that don't have IEPs. And then the third option is the Saxon math class that um, James generally teaches. And it's, um, it's for students who need a, more support in math. And so all three options are open to students with IEPs. That will be partially determined by the regular ed fifth grade teacher and um, also by, you know, the, the current case manager. Um, and that will be kind of finalized, not finalized, but that'll be discussed at the transition IEP. 
And while Gina doesn't teach a specific math class, one of the things Gina was saying when she was talking is that she really, um, for those kids that are in her academic support class, focuses on making sure they do um, practice their math with her and start that homework there so that she knows that they're going home um, understanding the concepts before they get home to do their, the finish up their homework there. And, you know, I wanted to just mention one other thing is that when students come to us with IEPs, um, schedules are somewhat fluid. So if, um, if a student gets to the middle school and we've created a schedule for, for them and something's not working at any point, I mean, we do want to give it a, a few, you know, definitely a, a, a chunk of time for them to adjust, but it's not unheard of to say, hey, something's not working, or maybe this math class isn't the right placement. Can we pull together an IEP at any point? A parent can ask their case manager to pull together an IEP and we can tweak the schedule. So, you know, a lot of our special, almost most, many of our special ed, almost all students take a, a gen ed science class because there is not a special ed science class currently in the sixth grade. So, but sometimes, um, you know, that may not be the right fit. Um, maybe we want to tweak the schedule. So that is not, if, if a schedule is not working for your child, do contact the case manager and we can discuss that. And I think we have just two minutes left. And one of the things um, I want to encourage all of you to do, you know, you can check out um, the, the middle school website for information. You can, um, you know, look at um, it takes a village um, for sort of more of that parent connection. And I would um, encourage you to, to once I don't know if the date for the um, web day has been scheduled yet for that sixth grade orientation, but I would keep your eyes out and kind of be looking for that because what you want to make sure of is that if you have summer um, travel or vacation plans, do you want to make sure that you're back and that your kids can attend that orientation because um, it's really going to help them with that um, transition into school. And then if we are, we're hoping, you know, we're hoping to bring all of our fifth graders for visits, but if there are students um, who need a little bit more um, support with that transition. You know, we have in the past worked with, you know, parents and case managers at the elementary school to set up, you know, single student visits or small group visits so that, um, you know, students can meet, um, you know, their special education teachers or meet the counselor. Um, we have a um, full-time school psychologist at the middle school um, who performs the same functions as your psychologist did in um, elementary school. And, you know, we have this whole team of support for those kids that need a little bit more support with their transition. We're happy to set up those individual meetings either this year or, you know, some of our staff comes back to work a little bit earlier in the summer. So um, I know that the, 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 counselors and, and other folks have offered sort of early tours in um, August when they're back as well to kind of help with that transition. Um, I'm going to, oh, actually, um, I can't um, put it in the chat because we have the chat, I'm not going to the whole group, but um, um, there was a question about if I could drop the um, it takes a village link in the chat, but you all can't see the chat, but what we are going to do is post this um, presentation along with um, a lot of the questions on the website and we'll make sure that um, the it takes a village link is there too, but if you Google it takes a village Mill Valley it comes right up. All right, well, I don't see any other questions that we haven't answered in the chat, and I want to make sure the teachers get back to their next period. Um, so thank you, everyone, for coming, and feel free to reach out if you have any questions. Thank you. I look forward to meeting all of you. Thank you. Thank you.